Welcome to Intermath. This is grade 8, lesson 5. We're talking about square root and percent today. A square root of a number is essentially an opposite to square of a number. Say you have 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is equal to 100. I can represent this expression using an exponent of 2 because an exponent tells me how many times I multiply the number by itself. In this case, twice, which is also going to be 100. We call this squaring. I'm squaring number 2. If I want to go from 100 to the two numbers, two possible numbers that were multiplied together in order for me to get 100, I will square root it. And once I square root it, I could have 10 or also negative 10. How come? Negative 10 squared will give me positive 100. Since when I multiply two negatives by each other, negative 10 times negative 10, it's 100. And the same thing happens with positive 10. When multiplied by itself, it's also 100, as we have already seen. So a square root of a number gives us the number that was multiplied by itself in order to get the number under the square root. If the number under the square root is a 0, square root of a 0, you will always get 0 as the answer. And it's neither positive or negative, so it's just 0. If the number under the square root is a negative number, negative 100, then there is no answer. You cannot find the square root of a negative number since there is nothing multiplied together that will produce a negative number. If, there are, if those two numbers are identical, whether they're positive or negative, anything squared will always be a positive number. Now let's talk about percent. Percent is something that we use in order to represent a whole or a part of a whole out of a hundred. When I want to turn a percent into decimals, I need to divide them by a hundred. So 5% divided by 100 is 0 0.05. If I want to, do, to go the opposite way, I'll do 0 0.2, for example, times 100. So I'm multiplying by 100 when turning decimals into percent, and that will give me 20%. If I want to find how many percent um, P of A I have, then I'll use the formula B equals A P over 100. And if I want to determine what percentage is one amount of the other, then I'll use the formula P equals B over A times 100. 100% 100 is one whole. Usually when we're working with initial amounts of investments and borrowing, we use uh, the initial amount as 100%. Let's look at this example. Say you have uh, $1,200 in your bank account right now. Your account pays a percent, pays interest. Interest is the amount that you gain on top of the initial amount that you have in the bank over some time. It's usually at some rate. An interest rate is the um, rate at which the money is growing or at which you are returning the money to the bank. So in this case, you have the deposit, so the money is growing. And at the end of the year, you end up with $1,236. What is the interest rate at which your money is sitting in a bank? Let's use one of the formulas that we have uh, learned. So 
I'm using the percent formula because I'm looking for an interest rate which is measured in percent. So P equals the final amount at the end of the year that you have over the original amount, the initial amount, and times 100%. P equals, dollars will eliminate, and you have 103%. Anything that's over 100 means it's over one whole. So you've gained 3% over the initial amount. That means that the money that you have in a bank is growing at a rate of 3% per year. 3%. So R equals the rate of your investment is 3% per year. This is it for this lesson. I hope you learned something new and I encourage you to now go do some practice on it. Then you can continue to grade eight, lesson six. See you next time.